Hi, this is Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and this video will show you how to use Scratch 2 on your Raspberry Pi. If you purchased a Science Buddies Raspberry Pi kit and are using the SD card that came with the kit, then there should be a shortcut to Scratch 2 on the desktop. Double click that to open Scratch 2. If you purchased your Raspberry Pi separately and are using your own SD card, then you can find Scratch 2 by clicking on the Raspberry Pi logo in the upper left corner, going to Programming, and then selecting Scratch 2. Make sure you select Scratch 2 and not Scratch. Different versions of Scratch are available for the Raspberry Pi, and this tutorial video is specifically for Scratch 2. Scratch is a graphical programming environment. It allows you to write computer programs by clicking and dragging together colored blocks of code instead of writing lines of text. This makes it much easier for beginners to learn to code. Rather than explaining all of the features of Scratch one by one, we're just going to dive right into writing your first simple program. First, click on the Events button towards the top of your screen, then click and drag the block that says When Spaced Key Pressed over to the blank area on the right part of your screen. Now, click on Motion, click and drag on the block that says Move 10 Steps and drag it over to the blank area on the right side of your screen. Notice that the blocks have little bumps on their edges that look kind of like puzzle pieces. These show you where you can snap the blocks together to create a program. In this case, we're going to take our move block and snap it onto the bottom of the when space key pressed block. The blocks will highlight when they're close enough to snap together. Now, you've written your first very simple program. When you press the space key on your keyboard, the cat over in this area of the screen, which is called the stage, should move 10 steps forward. If you want to change how far the cat moves in one step, you can double click on the number 10 and enter a different value. For example, if we change that to 20, now the cat will move farther every time we press the space key. There's also a drop down menu that allows us to select a different key. For example, we can use the up arrow instead. If you keep pressing the key, you'll realize you have a problem. The cat gets stuck on the edge of the screen. Let's add some more commands that allow us to steer the cat so it can go in any direction. Click on the events button again. Click and drag out a when space key pressed block. And change this key to the left arrow. Now, click on motion. Click and drag out a turn counterclockwise 15 degrees block and snap it onto the bottom of this block. Now, pressing the left arrow key allows the cat to rotate. Pressing the up arrow key moves the cat forward. It would be nice if we could steer in both directions, so let's add one more set of blocks that allows us to turn the cat clockwise. Now, using the arrow keys, we can steer the cat around the screen. You'll notice that this time, if we want to change the amount that the cat turns every time we press the arrow key, we need to change numbers in two different places. For example, if I want the cat to turn farther, I can change this to 45, and this to 45. Now the cat will turn farther each time I press one of the arrow keys. However, it can get cumbersome as it's annoying to remember to change this number in multiple locations. And if I forget, for example, if this one was still 15, then the cat will turn farther in one direction than the other. This is where variables come in handy. If you click on data and then the make a variable button, you can create something called a variable, which allows you to store a number that you can use multiple times in your program. For example, I'm going to make a variable called angle that tells me how far the cat should turn each time I press one of the keys. I can use the set angle to block to set the angle to whatever value I want. In this case, I'm going to call it 15 degrees. Now, I can drag the angle variable into each one of these text boxes.
and I will only need to update the angle in one location. For example, if I change this to 90 degrees, then I would expect the cat to turn 90 degrees every time I press an arrow key. I have a problem though. I'm pressing the arrow keys and the cat isn't turning at all. By default, the angle variable is set to zero. And you'll notice that this block doesn't have anything attached above it, even though it has this little indentation here. This section of code is never running because it's not associated with an event like pushing an arrow key. If I go back to the events menu, I can use this when green flag clicked button, which allows you to start your program and run code that isn't associated with a key on your keyboard. Now, I only need to click the green flag once to start my program. And now the arrow keys work to steer my cat like they did before. If I want my cat to display on-screen text or make a sound when it moves, I can use the looks and sound menus. For example, under looks, I can click and drag out this block that will now make the cat say hello for two seconds every time it steps forward. If I want the cat to play a sound, I can click on the sound menu, click and drag out the play sound block, and now the cat will move forward and make a meow sound every time I press the up arrow key. If I want to use a different sound, I can select them from the drop-down menu. You can record your own sounds or import other existing sounds into your program by going to the Sounds tab. Click on the Sounds tab, click on the speaker icon, and this will allow you to choose sounds from the existing library built into Scratch. For example, I'll import a dog noise by clicking OK, going back to my Script tab, which is the area where I write my program, and now the drop-down menu has the dog noise available as well. Let's change your program to make the cat move automatically. You can right-click a section of code to delete it, but we're going to keep this section that starts with when green flag clicked. We're going to create another variable and call this one distance. And again, the default value for distance is zero, so at the beginning of our program, we need to set that to something else. Now, we're going to use a very important concept in programming called a loop. Click on Control and drag out a forever block. You'll notice that this block looks a little different than ones we've seen before because it has a gap in the middle and this arrow pointing up at the bottom. That means that when the code inside this loop reaches the end, it'll go back to the top and happen again. We can use the motion blocks to make the cat repeat a motion forever. For example, I'll drag out the move 10 steps block and the turn 15 degrees block, but I want to use my variables here instead of these hard-coded numbers. So I go back to data, tell my cat to move distant steps, and then turn angle degrees. Now, when I click the green flag, the values for the variables we will be set, the cat will move forward, turn, and then keep repeating that process. Now, you'll notice that that's happening so fast that we can barely see it. Let's add a delay. Go back to control, click and drag out the wait one second block. I'm also going to increase the distance value a little bit so the cat's motion is easier to see change that to 50. Now when I click the green flag, you can clearly see the cat moving forward and turning at the same time. If we want to see those motions separately, we can put another weight block in between the two movement commands. Now the cat's motion help you visualize what's happening with the code. And again, if we don't want to have to change that weight number in two different places, we can create a variable. Let's go to data, create a variable called delay. Add a block to set the value of delay at the beginning of our program. Let's make it half a second. And now drag the delay variable into each one of the weight blocks. 
Now, since we've decreased delay from one second to half a second, when we run the program, the cat will appear to move faster. You might have noticed the sprites area in the lower left corner of the scratch window. Right now, it only displays the cat. You can add additional sprites to your program, either by importing them from the existing scratch library, drawing your own, uploading an image, or taking a picture with an attached webcam. Let's add another sprite to this program. I'm going to click on animals and add a dog. Now we have a second sprite in our stage area. You can also move the sprites around by clicking and dragging them. Notice that when I have the dog selected in the sprites area, the scripts tab is blank. That's because each sprite has its own script. If I click on the cat again, the program I'd written so far returns. You can also change the background of your stage, which is just white by default. Again, by importing an existing image from the Scratch library, drawing your own, uploading an image, or taking a picture. Finally, for most of the Science Buddies projects, you will be using Scratch to control the Raspberry Pi's general purpose input and output, or GPIO pins. To access the box to control those, you'll need to select more blocks, then add an extension. Select Pi GPIO, then click OK. Once you've done that, you'll have two new blocks available that you can use to set values and read values on the GPIO pins. So this video has given you a somewhat quick and very general overview of various features in Scratch that you will use in the Science Buddies projects. If you forget how to do something, you can always refer back to this video and to see specific instructions for the eight individual projects, click the link below the video.